Hey guys, my name is Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. You are about to watch a full length workout from my online members area here free on YouTube so you can check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. I encourage you to check out some of the links in the description if you want to learn more about Manflow Yoga or if you want to get started with a free beginners program. I have a seven day intro uh, which is free, no credit card required and it's an awesome way to get started in just about 15 minutes per day. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. We put out tons of workouts and content every week and I hope you enjoy this workout. Be sure to like it. Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. This workout is an all levels beginner friendly hip flexibility routine. So we're gonna be going through postures and modifications to help increase your hip flexibility, your overall hip flexibility, uh, mainly focusing on holding these postures for a long time and, and working deeper into your passive range of motion. So the goal here is to really stretch everything out as much as we can, utilizing our breath and our body weight to help open up, um, open up these muscles in your hips and increase your overall flexibility. Um, for this routine, you're going to need two blocks, um, a strap, if you don't have a strap, you can use a belt or a dog leash, and then if you have sensitive knees, I would recommend using a knee pad or a towel or just something to give your knees a little bit of cushion. Um, I'm going to be guiding you through every exercise, so don't be scared if you're new to this. Um, we're going to get through it. You'll be fine. We're going to get started in a low lunge. If you have a knee pad or you have a towel, you can use the knee pad. Put it down kind of in the middle of the mat. Right leg is going to go up between the blocks. Hands on either block. Make sure the blocks are turned all the way up. Release your left knee to the ground. And we're just starting here in this really relaxed low lunge position. Pull your chest up right. Lift your ribs away from your hips. Lightly press down through your right foot. So I don't want you dumping all of the weight into your left knee. I want your right leg responsible for holding yourself up here. And you can also use your hands on the blocks to support your body weight. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And out through your nose. In through your nose. And out through your nose. Keep that up. Trying to keep the breathing nice and slow, long and controlled. As you inhale, you can think about getting taller through your chest, lifting your ribs further away from your hips. And as you exhale, allowing your hips to sink further forward into this low lunge. If you want to make this more active and rely more on your lower body strength, you can bring your hands on top of your right thigh. You can keep your hands relaxed along your sides or even bring them up in the air. But the main focus here is allowing the hips to sink forward as you exhale, feeling the stretch through the front of your left hip, stretching your hip flexors. One more breath here. And then release your hands down and switch sides. So right leg is back, left leg is forward, foot between the blocks. Start by lifting your ribs up, pulling the ribs away from the hips, getting nice and tall in this lunge. Use your hands on the blocks so we don't have to worry about strength as much, but we can work more on stretching. And as you inhale, get nice and tall, maintain your posture. As you exhale, allow your hips to sink forward deeper into this lunge. I would recommend keeping your back toes tucked here just so we have a little bit more control um, with the right leg. Make sure that you're pressing down lightly, at least lightly pressing down through your left foot. You can push down a little bit harder if you want that more intense. Just make sure you're not dumping all of that weight into your right kneecap. You can use your hands on the blocks so you don't have to worry about holding yourself up with your legs. And we're focusing on that really slow, controlled breathing. And that breathing is what's going to help you increase your flexibility. Yes, of course, getting into the right posture, targeting the right muscles is important. But if you get there and you breathe really quickly and you're tensing your shoulders and you're, you're really tense through your whole body, 
that's going to prevent you from increasing flexibility. So we really want to focus on that slow, controlled breathing. And as you exhale, allowing your body to sink further forward into this. And I'm not really pushing my hips forward. I'm just allowing my body weight and gravity to kind of allow my hips to sink forward. Two more breaths here. Last breath. Okay, nice job. From here, I'm gonna have you stand up, step up between the blocks with both feet. And you're gonna step your left foot back 45 degrees, or pointed out 45 degrees, and come into kind of a, what I call a warrior one lunge here. Hands are gonna go on the block. Knee is going to track over your middle toes. Your front knee tracks over the middle toes, pushing down through that front foot. So kind of pressing your right glute toward your right heel, and then pushing into the outer edge of your back foot. And as you allow your hips to sink forward, you'll feel a stretch through your groin, through your left inner thigh. And that is our target area for this stretch. We're just gonna be here for about three deep breaths. So I want you to think one breath equals 30 seconds. So if you're confused about my counting method and you're like, Dean, three breaths is like eight seconds. What are you talking about? The breathing should be longer. So aim for getting that breath longer. As you exhale, sink deeper. One more breath. Exhale, sink deeper. All right, and then push down through your block. Inhale, pull your chest forward, aim your chest at the wall in front of you. And as you exhale, push down through your right foot, straighten your right leg until you feel a stretch, trying to keep your back flat here. So make sure that your back doesn't pull up toward the ceiling. Keep your back flat. Think about pulling your chest forward and up, and then feeling a stretch through the back of your right thigh. We're using the hands on the blocks so we don't have to worry about keeping the back flat. You shouldn't feel any tension in your low back here. If you would like a modification, if you still feel like you're rounding your back, then bend your knee a little bit more, so don't quite straighten your leg as much. You can also stack your blocks here. So I can put one block on top of the other, and that way I don't have to worry about folding my back, and I can straighten the leg a little bit more and really target uh, the back of your right leg. I'm gonna do three more big breaths here. This is a really helpful stretch for increasing hamstring flexibility. As you exhale, push down harder through the right foot, maybe straighten that right leg just a tiny bit more, but keep your back, keep your hips pretty much exactly the same. Back stays flat, your legs can lightly squeeze toward one another. One more big breath. Okay, and then go ahead and bend back into your right knee, come back toward that warrior one lunge, and go ahead and step up. So we're back to the top of the mat, and now we'll switch sides once more. So have your blocks outside, uh, on the outsides of your feet, feet, excuse me, take a big step back with your right foot, point it out 45 degrees, bend your left knee over the ankle, or keep it right on top of the ankle and your front foot, your knees can kind of track toward the middle toes. Make sure that you're pushing in the outer edge of your back foot here, hands resting on the blocks. You can use those blocks as much as you want here. So feel free to, you know, really put a lot of that weight into the blocks, into your upper body. And as you exhale, allow your hips to sink forward. And again, this is targeting your inner right thigh. Two more breaths here. It helps to keep your chest upright. I would avoid kind of folding down here. I like to keep my back neutral when I'm stretching hips, just because you do a lot of rounding in your back throughout the day. It helps to, uh, to not do that while you're working out. And then inhale, pull your chest forward, get a little bit taller, lengthen your body. And as you exhale, press down to your left foot, straightening your left leg until you feel a stretch. And that doesn't mean lock out your leg. 
That just means straighten that leg until you feel your hamstring starting to stretch. If you notice that your leg is bent a lot, you're feeling that stretch, but you still feel like you're doing a lot of work and holding your body up, stack the blocks so you can straighten the leg a little bit more without rounding your back. And we're hanging out here for a few breaths, just allowing the back of the left leg to open up. As you inhale, think about pulling your chest forward and up. As you exhale, maybe squeezing your left thigh a little bit more, straightening that leg a fraction of an inch more. And three breaths here. It helps to lightly squeeze your legs toward one another. If you want to get a little bit more engagement to help with kind of stretching a little bit more, but you don't have to. What I really want you to focus here on here is, is keeping your body relaxed and using your breathing to work deeper into your range of motion. One more big breath. All right, and then bend back into your left knee, back to that warrior, one, warrior lunge we started in, and go ahead and stand up all the way. Okay, nicely done. Here we're gonna take it into a wide stance, put a block on either end of the mat, and you'll find out why later. So take it into a wide stance, toes turn slightly in, turn your right foot to face out, and then bring your right foot over toward the right edge of the mat. Get your block, put it on the inside of your right foot, and then go ahead and sink into kind of a warrior two supported lunge here. And I want you to make sure that your hips are directly between both feet. So don't let your butt kind of pop out, pop out to the back here. Keep your hips right in the middle. And you're gonna make sure that your knee tracks over your toes. Don't let your knee come to the inside. Your hand is on that block just resting lightly or supporting your body weight, um, just allowing your hips to sink deeper in this stretch. Bring your left hand to your left hip, roll back your left shoulder, and try to push into the outer edge of your back foot here. We're only here for two more breaths. As you inhale, think about maintaining your posture, getting nice and tall. And as you exhale, allowing your hips to sink a little bit deeper into that stretch. One more breath here, lots of nice stretching going on through the groin. All right, and then push down through your right foot, just like we did before. Push down through the right foot. Start to straighten that right leg until you feel a stretch. Your hips are still facing to the outside. Hand is still on that block. Left hand relaxed on the left hip. And then push your right hip into your left hip until you feel a stretch through your inner right thigh. So this is specifically targeting your adductors. This is a really, really nice stretch uh, for increasing the mobility um, in that area, in your inner thighs. And this is really important for your knee health. It's really important for your back as well. So as you inhale, we're reinforcing that posture, getting nice and long. As you exhale, maybe straightening a little bit more through your right leg, increasing that stretch. And just like we did before, if you want, if you feel like you're not, for whatever reason, the stretch isn't working for you or you're not as flexible as you wanna be here, you can stack the blocks. So that works here as well. We're gonna do two more breaths. And it really helps to start with that leg bent and then slowly progress to straightening the leg more. You should feel the stretch on the inner thigh and not down toward the knee. If you do feel it kind of at the knee, bend the knee and then straighten the leg. All right, bend back into that Warrior two lunge we were in. Allow your hips to sink forward for one breath. And then we're gonna switch sides. So straighten your right leg, turn it in, back to that wide-legged stance. Turn your left foot out. If you took the block with you, put the block back. Edge your left foot out to the left, or, or the now it would be the right edge of the mat, depending on your perspective still. And then allow your hips to sink forward pressing your back hip into your front hip. If I got you all turned around here, then feel free to reposition yourself so you can still see me or whatever camera angle, whatever angle 
uh, works for you. We want to make sure again that the knee is tracking over the middle toe. Your left hand is going to rest on that block so you don't have to worry about holding yourself up here. And as you exhale, allowing your hips to press forward toward your left foot. Remember, the hip should be directly between your feet. You shouldn't be pushing your butt out toward the back. Right hand on the right hip, roll back the right shoulder. You've got one more breath here. All right, and when you're ready, big breath in. And as you exhale, push down through that left foot, straightening your left leg, pressing the left hip toward the right hip until you feel that stretch. Remember, you don't have to lock out the knee here. Just get to the point where you feel a good stretch. And you're going to feel the stretch on the inner left thigh. You want to roll back that right shoulder, keep your torso and your hips facing to the outside. And this is a supported triangle pose. So we're using the block so we can focus more on this as a passive stretch and not have to worry as much about core or hip stability. So really focusing on that inner thigh stretch. Take a deep breath in, think about lengthening, bringing your head away from your hips. And as you exhale, squeeze your left thigh, maybe straightening that leg half an inch. And if you don't need to straighten the leg anymore to feel a stretch, then I want you to focus on becoming more accustomed to the, the depth of the stretch you're in. So you don't necessarily have to go deeper into it to progress. You can also just become more comfortable in the degree of the stretch that you're in. One more breath. All right, bend back into the knee, coming back toward that warrior two lunge. One breath here. Really allow your hips to sink forward. And then bring yourself upright. Straighten your left leg. And from here, we're working our way back to the top of the mat. Grab both blocks, put them toward the middle of the mat. Bring your right foot outside the block at the top. And then step back with your left foot into a lizard with your knee lifted. So lizard is basically a low or, or a runner's lunge uh, supported and we're trying to get as deep as we can in this lunge. So your knee should still be above the ankle. Make sure that your knee is above the ankle, that it's not way behind it. And you're using the blocks so you don't have to worry about holding yourself upright or rounding your back. So the blocks just are a really nice tool here to make sure we can maintain proper posture. Squeeze your legs lightly toward one another. Pull the chest forward and up. Press your left heel back so we can straighten more through your left leg. Squeeze your left thigh. We've just got one more breath in this more kind of active version of lizard. And then slowly release that knee down. If you have that knee pad and you wanna use it, slide it under your left knee. And we're going to be hanging out here for a few breaths. So this is very similar to the low lunge that we started in, but we're going a little bit deeper, right? That right foot is further up and out. Maybe my left leg is a bit further back. Keep your chest upright. Make sure that you're not folding down here. The more length that you can throw from your left knee up through your ribs, the deeper the stretch is going to be. We'll take four breaths here. As you inhale, get nice and tall. As you exhale, relax your hips. Just allow your hips to sink forward. Keep your chest up, right? It even helps to look forward. Put as much weight as you want into those blocks. All right, and then we're gonna switch sides. So same as before, step your left foot out to the outer edge or kind of the outer edge of the mat, outside the block on the left side. Lift your right knee, keep your, leg act, your legs active to start. Use your hands on the blocks, allow your hips to sink toward the floor. Keep in mind if you felt like, if you feel like the blocks are preventing you from staying upright, you can put them up a little bit taller, right? We've got 
the ability to stack the blocks. Stay tall as you inhale, and as you exhale, allow your hips to sink toward the floor. One more breath in this active lizard with knee up. And then as you exhale, allow your right knee to sink toward the floor. Just kind of kissing the floor there, not dumping all the weight into the right knee, still keeping your left leg active, still using the blocks to support your body weight. And then lift your chest up. And as you lift your chest up, you'll notice a lengthening through the front of the right hip. And that's what we want here. We want to lengthen that area. And now shifting to really deep, slow, controlled breathing. As you exhale, allowing the hips to sink forward, releasing tension through your shoulders, even your face. Three breaths. And you don't necessarily have to move deeper into the pose to progress. If you notice that the intensity of the stretch goes from maybe a six to a five or down to a four or a three, that also means that you're increasing your flexibility. One more breath. All right. And then come out of that. We're going to go onto your back. Grab a strap. Lay on your back. Left leg is going to be straight out in front of you. Bring your right knee in toward your chest. Bring the strap on the sole of your right foot. Lay down flat on your back, shoulders and neck relaxed. And then bring your right leg up. Aim your right heel at the ceiling. Flex your toes down. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, press the back of your right knee forward, feeling that stretch through the whole back of your right thigh. You also feel stretch in your calves in your calves here. If you want to flex your toes down, if you feel like you have tight ankles, this is a great uh, addition to this stretch. If you notice that this is too much for you, just straighten that leg to the point where you feel a stretch. You might be at 45 degrees and feel a great stretch through your hamstrings. The point is to do the stretch as it works for your body and not just to mirror somebody else. So I'm pulling the strap back until I feel like I'm getting you know, a good five or six out of 10 intensity stretch. But I don't want to pull back as far as I possibly can because that's not going to allow me to work deeper into the stretch. Two more breaths here. And then shift that strap to your left hand. Keep your right hip on the floor. Bring your left leg over about six inches. So you're shifting the stretch, probably still feeling it through your hamstrings, but also now feeling it through your outer right thigh. Keep that right hip pulling down. Don't let it lift off the ground. To make this more intense, you can pull that strap in, bringing your foot closer toward your face. You can also straighten your right leg a little bit more. And this is going to help target not your IT band, but actually your outer quadriceps. You got two more breaths here, two more long breaths. As you exhale, going a little bit deeper into it. Last breath. All right, back to the middle. We're going to switch sides. So bring your left sole of the foot to the strap. Let your right leg come down. Start with that knee bent. Bring your left knee in toward your chest. Flex your left toes down. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, press the back of your left knee away from you. And starting to feel that stretch all the way from maybe from the back of uh, your lower leg, so all the way kind of just above your Achilles tendon, through the calf, the back of the knee, and through your hamstrings. You can lightly keep your abs engaged here. If you feel like you're overstretching your low back, you shouldn't feel any stretching there. So you can lightly engage maybe the front of your left thigh, your quadriceps, and your abs to protect the, the lower back. 
Otherwise, we're focusing on maybe getting that leg in a little bit closer as we exhale, maybe straightening the leg a little bit more as we exhale. Three more breaths. And if you're hoping to increase your hamstring flexibility, I would recommend doing this reclined strap stretch uh, every night. So just before you go to bed or maybe at the beginning of the day, um, make sure you do this stretch. Hold it for at least 60 seconds. Um, 90 seconds is better if you can hold it for that long. And make sure that you're really working on going deeper into it as you're holding it, really focusing on that stretch, not on anything else. All right, move that strap to your right hand. Keep your left hip down. Move your left leg over about six inches, maybe a foot. Keep that left hip pulling down in contact with the floor. Maybe straightening the leg a little bit more. And breathing here. Again, now still feeling that stretch through the hamstrings, but also now targeting the outer left thigh. Two more breaths here. And I'm trying to get five second inhales, five second exhales. So making that breath nice and long. All right, bring the leg back to the middle. Go ahead and release that strap. Bring the leg down. And now I want you to find a wall and do recline figure four. If you don't have a wall, cross your right ankle over your left thigh, just below the knee. Reach through your leg, make a figure four, grab the back of your left thigh, pull in your, right, your left thigh until you feel a stretch through the outer right hip. Your inner right thigh should be facing you. Flex your toes and pronounce the arch of your right foot to protect the knee. So we're working on externally rotating your hip here, not on just pressing the knee forward. If you have that wall, then you're gonna press your left foot against the wall, make a 90 degree bend with your left knee, and then we don't have to worry about holding the leg. So we're just doing a more relaxed version of this stretch. This is really important for sciatic pain. Um, this is a stretch that I'd recommend you do Every day, if you're looking to increase your hip flexibility, if you're looking to um, improve the overall health of your back, if you've got back pain, your glutes are a really big muscle. When they get tight, they're gonna pull on your back and cause pain. So this is a, a really easy stretch to help with relieving that tension. One more breath here. All right, and then we'll switch sides. So. Plant your right foot on the wall, crush your left ankle just below the right knee on the thigh. If you don't have the wall, you're just gonna reach through your legs, grab the back of your right thigh, and hold in that figure four shape. Your inner thigh should face you, your left knee should face out. If you do have that wall, then we're lightly pressing into the wall with the right foot. Make sure your left toes are flexed toward your shin that arch of the foot should be pronounced. So we're keeping the left ankle and the foot active to help protect the knee. If you have knee issues here, you wanna be really careful. Um, if you have you know, previous MCL strains, if you've had ACL issues in the past, um, just be careful with this uh, amount of knee movement. Try to keep your shoulders relaxed. As you exhale, you're allowing your body to work deeper into this stretch. Not pressing the knee forward here, but really focusing on that external rotation of the hip. You don't want to move your knee. Just move the hip. Two more deep breaths. All right, and then release. And I've got one more stretch here. We're gonna be doing a frog stretch. So this is an intense stretch, but it's really good for your hips and I would really encourage you uh, to try it. So you're gonna fold over the edges of your mat like you see me doing here. If you have a cork mat, make sure you don't crease the edges. And then relax the insides of your knee on the mat. Line up your ankles directly behind your knee. So we're resting here. Bring your hips forward to start, hands 
planted firmly, just like you do for a plank on the mat or on the ground in front of you. And then as you exhale, you're going to shift your hips back until you feel a stretch through the inner thighs. You might not have to go that far. So this is targeting your inner thighs or working your adductors. This is really important for increasing, um, really, really helpful for increasing your inner thigh mobility. And that's going to relieve tension on the knees. That's going to relieve tension on the lower back. But it is intense. So you might not have to bring the hips that far back to feel the stretch. When you feel a little bit more comfortable, bring your forearms down to the ground. And if you're not feeling comfortable at all here, check in with your breathing. So really slowing down your breathing. As you exhale, you're relaxing your hips, you're relaxing your shoulders, telling your body, hey, this stretch is okay, we're going to be fine. It helps to keep your, your torso kind of long and your spine neutral here, so we can focus on the stretch. As you exhale, you can shift your hips back further to go deeper into it. Or if this is plenty intense and you don't need to go any deeper, then just Stay where you are and breathe. We're going to do six more breaths from here. So frog is really intense, uh, but the best way for, to make it work is to hold it for a longer time. So you can't just do it for 30 seconds. We really need to do it for a longer amount of time. So you can kind of see that as I'm exhaling, I'm going just a tiny bit deeper into the stretch. I'm not pressing my hips back radically two or three inches every time. It's just a tiny bit, just tiny progression with every breath. And this is the last stretch. So if that gives you added motivation to push yourself and, and, and bear and kind of just stick with the stretch, hopefully that does it. Two more breaths, that's it. Nice long breathing. Let your knees relax. Let your ankles relax. Just let gravity and let breathing do its thing. Last breath. All right, now coming out of this, I want you to plant in your hands, lift your chest up, bring your hips forward, Bring your ankles toward one another, so bringing your feet in toward one another. And then bit by bit, I want you to walk your knees back in toward the middle until they're about hip width distant. And then hang out there for 10 seconds, don't move anything. Let your hips reset, relax. And we are finished. All right guys, so uh, that was our Again, beginner, all levels, hip flexibility workout. Um, if you wanna kinda test out, you know, do a before and after test, uh, either just right now, you know, take it into a squat, see how your body feels, if it feels better than it usually does. If you wanna try out a lunge and just see, you know, how different is it from the beginning, from the end, um, it's a really easy way to see that there is noticeable progress in just, you know, the span of about 30 minutes. So I hope you enjoyed that workout. Um, if you're watching this from the members area, be sure to leave a comment, inspire someone else to do this workout. Let us know what you thought of the routine. If you had a particular uh, difficulty with one of the postures, you have questions, put them in the comment section. Um, this is a community, it's not just an online resource. Um, if you're concerned about hip flexibility, I'd recommend you work on it at least three times per week. My general recommendation with yoga is to include 100 minutes per week. Um, that sounds like a lot, but that comes out to about 15 minutes per day. So if you can manage that, um, right? Is that how math works? 15 times seven, 95? Yes. Um, so if you can manage that, then that's, that's going to have a, a really noticeable impact in just a few weeks, but you've gotta be consistent. Um, cork yoga mats, these should be back in stock in September, 2020, and we're getting a huge shipment in, so hopefully we won't sell out again. Uh, we've been selling out very, very quickly in the past with smaller shipments, so hopefully these are able to stay in stock for a while. Um, we are working on getting knee pads, don't have those yet. The blocks should also be available um, this fall. So thanks for being part of Manful Yoga, and I'll see you on the next workout.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that workout. Hope you learned something new. Uh, try to make these workouts very helpful in terms of technique, in terms of learning how to properly engage muscles and build strength with yoga. If you're looking for more workouts, I encourage you to check out the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure I have over a thousand. Uh, and if you want more, if you're looking for an organized program to get started, I highly recommend checking out the Manflow Yoga members area. It's just $1 to get started with a seven day trial. So thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to like this video if you liked any of it. It's really helpful. And I hope to see you on future videos.